something, but it's got this organicness to it, this, you know, this, you know, uh, tribal African aesthetic to it that's obviously, you know, it's not like hand-fisted. It's not like, you know, we got this lab where there's like African masks hanging up everywhere. No, it's but it's it's more general touch of everything that is obviously yeah. inspired by it. Yes. And it's just and re- you gotta a remember really that good vibra- synergy of the two. You gotta remember, vibranium is the most one hardest Metal most metal indestructible, world. most versatile. You could do all kinds of stuff with it, power stuff, yeah. and make life apparently, and heal stuff. And blah, my brain you could do whatever you jolly well want it to. It's just like, it's just like you know, here's the three things that you already know about my brain. Here's a whole hat full of other things you can pull out anytime you want. Yeah, There's, literally, sadly, you can do anything with my brain set. Uh, okay, uh, can, actually, uh, speaking of the vibranium, can we come back to a point? So we, you may have noticed. You may have heard in our last oh, speculation well, thing. we got to talk about the care chief before we mention that. Ugh, uh, fine. Well, that's like one of the coolest parts. All right, moving on. Moving on. So character-wise... Wait, what, what was the coolest part? One of the... Uh, well, not the coolest part, but uh, one of our cool parts about that uh, with, the, uh, with the thing and the thing. I have no <laughs> idea what he's talking about. Okay, so... Okay, uh, characters. Let's go through the characters. They had... Uh, Plenty of characters in this movie. You had Agent Ross from Civil War. He was fun. Martin oh, yeah. Freeman is always going to be fun. Yeah. He's, just, he's such a charming individual. Even though his motivations weren't ever exactly clear. It's like, is he... Good? Is, is he good, mainly for the CIA? Or? Is he for himself? For the CIA? Is he a corrupt guy? Is he trying to work with a better... Is he like a Coulson kind of a guy? Is he like a double agent? I really don't know. He kind of just flip flops all over the yeah. place. I'm not sure what his deal is. Um, I like him much more now than I did before. Mm. Um, then you have Chadwick Boseman as uh, Black Panther. Black Panther, as a character, was one of the better parts of the movie, oh, I will yeah. admit. Because he really pulls off the whole, I am a king, I am responsible for a country, Everything. you know, this is a I'm not this heavy con- burden. I am not but, in control but, of everyone. But I'm actually going to jump in there and do my job. I'm not just going to mope about, oh, the burden of being royal. No, I'm actually going to yeah, he you know, actually proactively do stuff. That's the whole point of being a Black Panther. Yeah. So that was a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have uh, probably one of my favorite characters, mm. Shiri, his sister. Oh, my gosh. Uh, she was she... a lot of fun. Oh, my gosh. She was... <laughs> they could not have done her better. Yeah, she um, just from the get go. You know, she she beginning she's... scene. She comes in. You are automatically gonna like her. Mm-hmm. Um, the starting scene is Black Panther's getting back from that mission that we mentioned earlier, uh, about him finding his ex and yeah. bringing her back to Wakanda. And then you got his mom and his sister, sister and bodyguard lady, whatever she's supposed to be. Uh, the sergeant. Or it's, Something sergeant or something like that. She's the leader of the lady army. with dressed in red with a spear, except her her gold. shoulder is gold. That's the only way you can tell her apart from the other ones. I'm sorry. Pretty much, uh, except that one scene when she had to put put on a wig. Well, yeah, but, but, uh, but anyway. But his sister. Yeah, she's just sitting there in, in her shorts and a t shirt, just be like Yo. making jokes. She's like, uh, I'm gonna show. It. I've got some updated stuff for you. I'm gonna show you it, and uh, he's like, What? This suit is good. And uh, she's like, nah, I've got something better for you. And uh, they're just messing around. And uh, she's sent, I can't remember why she's sent away. But she literally just walks away. And uh, she's like, er, he's like, what, er, how do you know, er, er, what do you know more than me? And she's like, everything. And she and she flips them the birds just walking away. She's like, ew, I'm so sassy. And then, and then, and then her mom's she's like, like she's sure. Like, she's like. Oh, sorry, man. Seriously, mom. But oh. and, and, and she, right from the get go, you get the feeling that she's like, well, obviously she develops weapons and stuff. She's gonna be like yeah. that hyper nerd person who's super sassy. She but creates. She, but she's not actually. A, you think she would have been kind of obnoxious in that role, but she's actually kind of charming and a lot of fun oh, yeah. because she's just incredibly enthusiastic and just always, you know, being being the the, the chipper one in the situation. Her, her being, jokes. Being willing to. Why is crack all the time? Her jokes. Oh. Just say it. Don't even give them context. Just say it. What are those? That's all I'm going to say. Yep. Go watch the movies and find what he's talking about. Oh. That was delightful. That was very delightful. They're uh, called sneakers because you know you, you, you they're, they're never quiet. mind. They're, yeah. 
Oh, she made the perfect jokes at the yeah. right time. She was a, she, she was, was just wonderful. a lot of fun. She was wonderful. Uh, definitely, other than Black Panther, she's definitely my favorite from that movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, bodyguard lady is I can't remember her name. Yeah, the lady made... red with a spear, but she has oh, the gold uh, shoulder pads. She's she didn't make that much of an impact. She yeah, was a main character. There's not a lot to say about her, other than she's captain of the guard or whatever. She is not one of the main characters. She just kind of does her thing. And she, she doesn't really have a story to play other than she's loyal to T'Challa. Er, to, to the throne. The throne. throne. Uh, she will serve T'Challa. She... But really, she could have been literally any person. It wouldn't have really mattered. Yeah, because it, it doesn't mean like she was a bad actress or anything oh, like that. It's just... It was fine. It's, it's just, just her role in the, the story was... was and, not there wasn't a lot there. They not, could not they definitely memorable. could have done much better with that. Yeah, you, um, um, who else was there? There was his ex ex girlfriend. Um, <laughs> she didn't really leave much can, an impact with me either. Again, I cannot remember her name. I'm gonna get chewed up in the comments. This is like right at the beginning. You know, he has to go get her for the coronation and all that, and you know, bada bing, bada boom. You're my ex girlfriend, and there's like sort of some witty love banter. She's between a spy. Them. Uh, mm-hmm. And all that. It's but, just, again, she's kind of forgettable. Not a lot stands out about her. Yeah, like... Yeah, she did some important things. Yeah, yeah she, she was, still helped T'Challa. And, uh... At the time, she's still together with T'Challa. Honestly, of his but, little support group, the only ones that stood at all were was his sister, sister and maybe his mother, just because, you know, she's a motherly figure and, you know, she's all wise also and Also, Jane... It, is, I can't remember his actual kind of name, but James, the uh, Forrest Whitaker, he actually had a decent role in the movie. Because uh, remember, he had, it was shown in the uh, beginning of the movie uh, with T'Chaka and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was actually sent to spy on his brother. Another reason I want to watch uh, it again was that there were a lot of plot threads that kind of got, I wouldn't say lost exactly, but you kind of, it got yeah. kind of confusing. It was who, that, who was who and what their impact on the story was. It was, it was said that he died, though. Forrest yeah. Whitaker is a pretty darn cool guy. Um, he also played in Rogue One. Hmm. Uh, but in my opinion, I think he had a decent role. He wasn't, like, shadowing anyone else, but decent role. So, yeah. yeah that, um, that's that's the thing that that a lot, there were a lot, actually there were a lot of characters in it. it was, yeah. Honestly, it was kind of hard to keep track of all of them at times. Yeah. The main character, of course, was uh, Black Panther and... No. I'm talking about T'Challa. Yeah. He wasn't the main character. Ooh. Claw. Oh. I'm Joe. just messing with you again. I was about to say, like, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, the main character, of course, was T'Challa building up his storyline being they did, really yeah. didn't show much in Civil War. Mm. Um, again, as far as being a... You know, setting up set pieces and being a not exactly origin story, but more like a, I guess a background story for Black kind of like uh, Spider Man Homecoming. We were talking yeah, about that. Yeah, honestly, that is a really it's it's, a, it's actually a smart idea. Just because one, uh, in Spider Man Homecoming, uh, Spider Man Homecoming, it, it was we did it was not want up, to see another one. Uh, it was set up very very similar between the two movies because yeah. it's not exactly an origin story. You're kind of, you're kind of just jumped in the middle of them after their whole origin thing, but while they're still developing yeah, as, a as a character. Because I did not... I'm going to... Uh, this might sound weird. Uh, but I did not want to see another Uncle Ben scene. We had it in the first Spider-Man movie yeah. with Tobey Maguire. Exactly. We had it with Andrew Garfield. We don't want another Uncle Ben story. Well, actually, as far as that goes, I kind of would like to see a little bit more of an origin story on this particular Spider-Man. I'm, I'm just saying. But I would anyway. say more more as a uh, flashback. Oh well, yeah, but something but, like but, that, but not but, like a whole movie based on how. But it became the, but just Spider-Man. the way the way that they just kind of implied and then brushed off any origin stuff with him was like, man, now I'm really curious about his origin. <laughs> Everyone before the movie, uh, they're like, man, I really hope they don't show another origin. Hope they don't show another origin. Dang it, where's the origin? <laughs> Pretty much. Anyway, we're getting off topic. But uh, uh, black black fam. So again, it was very similar in that. General you, idea. You don't, you don't see him growing up and him doing the whole Thor thing of growing up as a prince and becoming the king and all that and inheriting great power. You're already there. And you're seeing him as his character is already somewhat developed but still is developing. It has a lot of... 
he's already developed a little bit, but he still has much more to fully develop. Exactly. Which is a good thing, in my opinion. Is the camera still going? Yeah. Okay. Well, your battery is low, though, so we should probably... No, no, it's still going. You're good. You're good. Well, don't worry. I, uh, go ahead and start continue talking about that. I'm going to plug it in. it. Okay. Um... So yeah, it, it is it is a refreshing way of seeing superhero movies in that they're you're introduced um, well in in media res I believe is the proper term for that. Yeah. Where you don't really know exactly what's going on, you're just kind of thrown into the thick of things, and then you're shown stuff you know later. And it gets your mind along. thinking. It really gets your mind mm -hmm. thinking. As opposed to just having everything lay out in front of you. Here's what this is, here's what this is, here's what this is. Explain, 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 explain. Okay, boom. That's where we are. As opposed to, you are here. What's going on? Who is this person? What is that? I don't know what's going on. I have to figure out what's going on. Okay, so he said that, so which means this, blah, 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 blah. So it's a much more engaging and much more, well, it's a great example of show, don't tell. Yeah. They're showing yeah. you what's going on. They're not explaining it, which le Which makes your imagination work, because you're like, exactly. what happened with this? What happened before... It, exactly. It gets your imagination worse, which is a, I would say is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Cause, yeah, it's classic show don't tell. That's, yeah. That's like the literary device. Um, so, other uh, the characters in the movie were great. Other than some were kind of lacking in some parts. Just straight up forgettable, honestly. Yeah. His sister is not forgettable. Her sis his sister is just way too much fun. No, yeah. And also, in the movie, you're not going to forget her. Oh, and also, uh, just touch real quick on the, um, uh, the... Agent Ross? No, no the, the Fifth Tribe people... Oh, the, uh, we'll, the Ape Clan or something like we'll, that? We'll just call them the Cavemen. Because they they all live up in the mountains and caves The leader and stuff, is and they're all like, Oh, we don't do technology. You guys suck. We stick to the old ways. And we bark like dogs, literally. <laughs> they go, woof, 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 woof. Pretty much, uh, the leader of the clan is White Ape. Yeah, which the is, guy that tries to take over the throne right at the beginning and all as that. As you guys might remember in the comics, uh, White Ape, he was a, uh, kind of, not villain, but a guy who kept trying to take over the throne. Yeah. So in that regard, you know, they did a good job with him, and honestly, he, he was also a lot of fun. <laughs> just, he's just this big You drunk. say something more, you say one more thing, and I'm gonna feed you to my children. <laughs> The kid, and Age Ross is like, what? He's like, no, I'm just playing. We're vegetarians. Yeah. So just just very much that, you know, big gruff guy who's just all like having none of your garbage. And he's just like, eh, whatever. There's also that one, is, uh, one of his soldiers that looked like Mr. T. Yeah, that was kind of funny. <laughs> he shows up on screen and he's like, is that Mr. T? <laughs> yeah. So, so well, yeah. yeah, the characters were, there were some lacking. For the main, they, they were okay for the most part. Again, yeah. that that is where the movie failed a lot is just as far as the character development set within a lackluster story. Because the main story was, mm. yeah. Because the main purpose of the movie was to show. And I really, and I really do understand that because they they have a lot they're trying to set up for the next movie. Yeah, and they want, need to make sure. You're and they've familiar got with so everything. limited time. You have the movie Avengers comes out in May. Yeah, I, that is. There's a lot of Marvel coming away. out this year. Three months away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really have a tight squeeze. Oh yeah. And trying to get in. Yeah, this is the this is where the main battle is going to be. This is what's going to. Uh, this is uh, where everything's going to be set. Yada yada yada. So all that. Um, but okay. that's on the characters. Okay. So this now touching on the whole Infinity War thing. Yes. Um, if you guys remember in our last video. Uh, the preview and all that. We were discussing... Um, um, where we thought the Soul Stone was. Yeah, because that's the only one that hasn't even been mentioned or seen or anything yes. thus far at all. And we've assumed, you know, being that... Be... We assumed it was going to be in Black Panther because it's the last one before Infinity War. Because it wasn't in uh, Thor, the Dark, er, Thor Ragnarok. It wasn't in any of the previous uh, movies. And this it... is the last movie before Infinity War. And, spoiler warning, it's never even mentioned. And not even closely mentioned. So again, that, as far as being a standalone movie all by itself, it nailed that. It yeah. has almost zero connection to the rest of the MCU whatsoever, including not mentioning any stinking Infinity Stones. So, this... so my theory still holds true the whole that point. the Vib mountain of vibranium that crash landed on Earth thousands and, and of years ago... And it does ago, show that in the movie. It does yeah, that, show the that vibranium... Was, that, uh, was a, that was a very cool... 
I honestly didn't realize the movie was starting at first because you know, when they went finish up with the previews and everything and went into it, it was just this kind of jaunty music with like stars and stuff. And I was like, oh, is this a preview for something or whatever? And you know, heard a voice, you know, saying, "Tell you the story of our people." And it's still all chipper and like stuff. It's like, wait, what's going? Wait, is this a wait? Whoa, pull my glasses. This is the movie. <laughs> I saw you like get it up in your eye uh, on your head, and you're like, oh, wait. I, was expect- <laughs> I was expecting more previews. What the heck, man? Um, so. The original, th- well, his original theory that we mentioned in the last one that uh, the Soul Stone is actually encased in the Vibranium. The mm-hmm. Vibranium is a shell. Being mm-hmm. it is the smartest thing, one of the most, po- probably one of the most powerful things in the world. Well, the most indestructible things in the universe. Yeah. yeah. And casing it in another uh, indestructible thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I was speculating, was that um, the soul stone would somehow that all the vibranium was just the container for the soul stone, no. and this again they never actually said anything. No credit, no credit scene, no nothing. But it does not way, disprove it. The way that, in particular, the way that the soul or the the vibranium meteor is described and its effects on Wakanda and whatnot kind of still leads me to believe that there is something to it because because it, it describes it crash landing and how it affects the you know plant life around and brings about the heart-shaped herb which makes it the black panther yeah, that's the and also it... connects him to the panther god bast and whenever he becomes black panther he like goes to this you know afterlife thing yeah. with all the other people who have been black panthers and gee it's almost like he's his soul is visiting the souls of the undead soul stone cough cough hint hint yeah, cuz one, vibranium as a metal and all that doesn't really match up with a flower that can literally give you power. Yeah, how does vibranium leaching into the ground give you this flower thing that gives you superpowers and also connects you to the souls of the dead? It's almost like everything's all connected up in this big web of stuff. Yeah. Like you're connected to the the vibranium itself. Like the vibranium is connected with something that controls souls, maybe. So I my money on my money is that the soul stone is buried in the heart of the vibranium mountain, and that that the soul stone is leaching power through the vibranium. And that's the land how the flowers it. work. And that's how the connection to the undead, or, the or dead, the dead, yeah, and uh, all that making it how we can actually talk to his souls. Mm-hmm. And like, and maybe it's like once you become a Black Panther, then you're always connected to it, even after death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because maybe it. Uh, maybe after taking that one thing uh, the, from the flower and uh, so, uh, um, I don't want to say eating it, but drinking it. Okay, quick uh, nitpick. The heart-shaped herb grew on a tree in the comics. Thank you very much. Anyway, continue. But um, drink, uh, he, how he drank it. What if that is the thing that's actually uh, from, or if it is from the soul stone, maybe that's the reason why he can actually connect to the... Uh, dead and visit the previous black panthers who mm-hmm. took the yeah because uh, they're all connected to the soul stone which yeah. we have seen absorbs souls and controls minds and yeah. stuff like that and it would make a lot of sense because mm-hmm. one we didn't see it in Infinity war and but, here is the one but, if this is the case Ragnarok. what would be absolutely amazing is like a finale or something to infinity war or during be, the battle of wakanda would be thanos reaching the mountain and then he just, like, you know, hops down, he's standing on the vibranium, and he's just like, oh, so lovely. Then he takes the Infinity Gauntlet and just punches it. A giant and the open. entire mountain just explodes. And then he's left standing at the bottom of this crater, and, and sitting there on the ground in front of him is the little Infinity Stone. He's just, like, pluck it and stick it on there. It's like, no, it's just complete. Because there is a giant opening... Because he can technically jump in or something like that. Because mm-hmm. there's this giant opening. Well, yeah, they've been mining it, it for a thousand years. Um, so technically, he could just like jump down, hit into the center, and literally just like. Whoa. That would be so cool. Yes. So yeah, that's that's. So on a technical reason, no, they did not show the Infinity Stone, which is. Yeah, that that is a interesting. <laughs> Um, uh, I, it's it's hard to grip about their lack of world building or references to anything else because it is a standalone movie. That's the whole point. You don't want to connect it too much. You don't want to make and, it. You know, some other other Marvel movies have have relied way too much on interconnected stuff, and it's like you have to make sure you've seen all this other stuff so that you'll know what's going on for this. Blah, you need blah. to know this before. So you it do really this. there really is something to say for it being completely standalone like that. 
But at the same time, you want to know more about what's going on and what's going to happen and how things are interrelated. You like that the world building is a good thing. So yeah. having none of it, I don't know, it's hard to gripe about it, but at the same time, I really want to gripe about it. So it's like, ah. it's, There's, again, pros and cons. is like you want to uh, have it connected, but also on the other hand, you're like, not re- I really don't want it. Yeah. So, so it's more of those nitpicks. Yeah, that's more um, of yeah, so. But... I think that it has fulfilled the uh, oh the end credit scene. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Final one being it is the yeah. End we'll credit just touch scene. on that real quick again. One more final spoiler warning. Just in end case. credit scene. There was two like normal. Yeah. Except well we already we already talked about the mid credit scene. Which so the mid credit. It was scene. just him. Hi, I'm at the UN. Hi UN guys. Guess what? We're gonna be humanitarian. That, that yeah, you're gonna be humanitarian. Yeah, that really wasn't a yeah. It had almost zero bearing on the rest of the movie other yeah. than. I guess so l- you literally, that, yeah. you could have just added that into the actual movie. And... Yeah, you could have had that be the actual tale into the movie, and then actually include a scene that was meaningful somehow. But but, but the main one was at the end, mm-hmm. the final end credit scene, which David and I called in the previous video. I didn't call it. I called it. Okay. That there were gonna be a reference. Now they didn't have a reference to Bucky Barnes in the movie. Uh, when uh, they brought Ross, uh, Agent Ross to there after being shot, it was like uh, uh, his sister's like, "Oh, great! Now, uh, now we have another white American man to heal." Um, or another broken white man, or something. Broken like white that. man, and uh, that was a joke I play on Bucky Barnes, and we're like, "Wait a minute! If Bucky Barnes was already there, then so were the Avengers." What? The question is, did they leave? But again. To, uh, Ah, the timeline is breaking my mind. Okay. It, Best not to think about okay, it. Okay, ignore that question. We'll get back to it so, eventually. That was literally the only thing we thought, oh, well, oh they have their, um, their but, random... Just subtle wink-wink, nod-nod kind of thing. Then it hits the end credit scene. You see these three children... Oh, look at the face. Look at the cute little face. Oh. Looking over this person. We had no idea who it is. Just looking over, smiling, laughing, and all that. Um, then, then Shiri's like, hey, what are you doing in there? I'll come running out of the hut. And then walking out of the hut right behind them is... Bucky Barnes. Ta-da! Uh, he doesn't have his Hurry gold... He Bucky does... Barnes! Yay! He doesn't have his gold uh, vibranium arm yet. He still doesn't have that yet. Which is kind of a smart idea, being... In case something like Civil War happens again. Yep. Um, so he just so walks in with a Wakandan clothes. And she's all like, yo, how are you feeling, diggity dog? And he's all like, schnazzy. And she's like, how are you feeling, uh, Sergeant Barnes or something like no, that? No, diggity dog. Oh. Um, and he t- he tells her that he's doing fine. And he Darn thinks- tootin'. <laughs> he thanks her for uh, helping him and all that. And asks... Something I can't remember it. This is why we should see it a second time. So. Yeah. Uh, but he says something, and she's like, "I'll show you," and that's when it ends. Now the question is, if this is over a week, so from I've, Civil War, I thought he was frozen, and the way that this is presented, she's like in a hut next to a stream out in the middle of nowhere. So is it like, is she doing this secretly or something? Is there just a dummy frozen back at the main base? Is it Bucky Barnes' clone? I don't know. The question is, like, why is he unfrozen? He was supposed to be frozen... Again, some... timeline, is this, like, a long time after the Black Panther movie? Is it right after the Black Panther movie? Are the Avengers in Wakanda at that point, or are they not? It's... No, ah! After Doctor Strange, I love that movie, but after Doctor Strange, timeline kind of disappeared. Um, so, yes, we have the Bucky Barnes cameo, but... it didn't really answer any questions or they just really they, it literally wait. just asked more questions like, like why is he unfrozen why is he there where is he um is he in wakanda or is he in that new place it's just like it's dreadfully it asks then. more questions than it answers them so yeah so it did show the bucky barnes cameo which is a i don't want to say good thing but an okay thing because we haven't seen him since civil war but it just asks more questions. It's like it's so very confusing. But so overall, anyway. our thoughts on the movie. What would you say? Again, six and a half out of ten. I think that visually stunning, the art style, the yada yada yada, all was great. 
Story was kind of crap. Characters, sometimes good, oftentimes forgettable. It's about half and half. Um, the message, not bad, but ham-fisted. Uh, to the way point where it got kind of distracting. Um, so, again, like every but, movie, there's pros and there's cons. Although, as far as world building and set piece building for the next movie, probably yeah. really good. Yeah. It's definitely going to make... They had to do this before Infinity War just because, one, they had it's, to... Yeah, despite it, it despite it being you know a standalone Black Panther movie, it is kind of a filler movie before Infinity War comes out. So yeah. there is that. Like, but, what, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. Uh, but overall, would you recommend it to a uh, to a person? To I see? would say so. Yes. It, there's enough good about it that and, I would want to see it again, and I would recommend it to somebody else. Yeah. Same here. I would definitely recommend it to a friend. Aiden's gonna be seeing it Saturday, same as Brayden. Um... So I'm excited for them to see it. I want to see how they think. I'm not going to spoil anything. The only thing I told Aiden, because he was like, how was Black Panther? All I typed in was capital letter, or all caps, what, what are those? those? All I said, that was it. That was it. So I didn't want to spoil it, but I did want to mention that. He's going to love that because he loves he's that gonna joke. Be, he's going to be just writing that joke for months, isn't he? Oh, yes. He's definitely going to No, no you are. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be doing this. He's got well. their next 4 H me. It's just like, you know, what are those? Uh, those are my crops. Ah! What? No context. That's the whole point. No, that was a meme joke. This what? guy is, that goes up to his grandma and is like, what are those? And then she's like, these are my crocs. Yeah. I was playing on a joke on that one. Okay. I, but I, I think that's going to be it for this review. I think so. Overall, great movie. Recommend it. One, maybe one and a half thumbs, thumbs up. Overall, I would recommend it to a friend. Definitely a good, a good movie. Pros and cons. Watch it. Give Marvel more money. Make him make the next movie faster. There you go. Oh, and the Stanley cameo is funny. That's oh, funny. yeah. The Stanley cameo. I'm just going to slide these right over here. I just... Okay, <laughs> one like equals okay. one unabused hunter. Um, oh, <laughs> so I think that's gonna be it. Hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, let us know in the comment section below, like, as well as like, hitting like, the like, like button. Like, 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 um, like, if you're at like, all new to this channel, definitely think about subscribing. Subscribe, 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 and subscribe. And if you want us to continue doing this, we're gonna be continuing anyway. 